Happy Monday, everybody. We have a new meta going on. Uh, Perils in Paradise came out, what, Tuesday of last week. We have some things to talk about. First of all, just to go right into the win rates. When uh, Perils first launched on Tuesday, like 24 hours later, it was Demon Hunter, Demon Hunter, Demon Hunter. And then if you're looking at the win rates now, I love to see seven different classes have above 50% win rates on decks. Now we've seen that representative of bronze to gold before. This is not news or what have you, but you know, for the longest time, when you look at the win rates, when you're going to hsreplay.net or other things, you're gonna see like three on there, maybe four, and then the rest are like barely anything. To me, I think that's healthy. Do I think something needs to be adjusted? There's some small adjustments. Do I think it's on the perils in paradise? side absolutely not let it settle for a little bit um i have several decks uh five of them two are if you have none of the perils in paradise cards will you be able to play this game the answer is yes and then i have three new decks and then we'll talk about some of the cards um, that are in this meta right now first of all look at the win rates uh death knight has several options it quite a few actually rainbow is pretty good mining's pretty good uh, there's the rainbow tourist mode now uh, demon hunter only has one right now pirate demon hunter it's very strong um, and I think that's it I don't think there's anything else I think if you're playing demon hunter you're playing pirate or you're not really messing around with anything other in that class um, will that be forever no it's not gonna be forever uh, druid is still doing druid things dragon ramp treant um, there's some combo things there that are that are pretty high up um, But yeah, druids doing druid things Hunter has some options hunter has secret and spell and highlander or what have you remember. This is bronze to gold This is only up to perils in paradise. So things will change Elemental mage spell mage. Those are good. The rest of them. Not so great uh, Paladin paladins doing what druids doing Paladins doing paladin things. You got hand buff, flood, mining. I'm sure there's other alternatives out there. Um, it's very good and it's very cheap. Uh, Priest has Zerimi. Um, there's a couple of things that they're working on with Automaton Priest. Um, it's pretty fun with the new uh, tourist mechanic, so I wouldn't count Priest out forever. It's just too expensive. Every deck in there is, is really, really expensive. Uh, Rogue has Elemental. Don't let this list fool you. There's a lot more things that Rogue is dealing with. Um, it's not just Elemental Rogue. There's some, there's some stuff. If anybody has any chance of being busted, it's the rogue class. Don't sit on rogue. It's going to be pretty strong. Uh, Shaman has elemental, pirate, Highlander, rainbow, swarm. Wow. That's a lot of options for Shaman here. Uh, Warlock has pain. It has sludge. When I originally started talking about Perils in Paradise, I thought that uh, pain Warlock was just too fast for a meta that this was, you know, very swingy in terms of uh, your, your turns. You sit on your opponent too long and your opponent's going to hit you in one turn and kill you in one turn. But no, it's not the case. And, and pain Warlock is pretty high up there. And then Warrior has Virus Control, Highlander, Mech. Um, there's options for everybody. This is what I have for the meta right now. This is just this week. All these are below 5,000 dust. Uh, some of them don't have any of the new cards as well. So if you didn't buy or you didn't have any of the Perils in Paradise cards, Unholy Death Knight is still doing good. It's at uh, zero dust, obviously, and the win rate, it's 50.3%. It's not flashy, but it gets the job done. It's the same Unholy Death Knight that we've been talking about for months now. Um, great news is, is you could just log in and start playing. And listen, you know, the Unholy has some options for you to mess around with uh same thing with hand buff paladin this is another one it's at 720 dust and the win rate is still consistently 62 percent and it's the same deck that we've talked about several times in the past couple of months before air guitarist righteous protector scarab keychain just small stuff that you're obviously going to work on buffing with the grime street outfitter and you know muscle of Tron's also in there you're going to buff your hand and then you're going to hit your opponent many times in the face with all those very small minions in the mana cost that they're turning into large minions that are tough to get out of and then always these have the uh the rumble cards which are amazing rumble cards are awesome so let's talk about 
some cards that have uh, some decks excuse me that have perils and paradise cards in it first of all we're going to talk about elemental mage it's at a 65.2 percent win rate with 1320 dust that's pretty good look at the uh, popularity is growing every day every day win rates very steady very steady and this is an easy pilot deck um, you've talked about it. We've talked about it. Excuse me. Elemental mage is very, very simple. You're dealing with elementals above and beyond every single turn that you can. And you're just the war of attrition and elementals are your game. The one thing I want to mention on this one, and we will talk about this one again, is Lamplighter. Lamplighter is an amazing um very low cost for you to craft elemental that's just battle cry deal one damage improved by in each turn in a row you've played elementals you're going to play elementals all the time and then you know you're going to go ahead and use saloon brewmaster to either grab lamp lighter again or any of these other elementals that you have it's very very strong um try this one it's very easy to pilot as well it's 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 really good like i said it's only 1320 dust next up is elemental rogue and this one's at 1880 dust and this win rate is 52.8 percent listen is this the most popular rogue no not right now there's some other stuff out there it does have the highest win rates right now but Rogue has some busted cards. Rogue always has busted cards. And Rogue has the ability to play any card imaginable that it wants to play. So this one's a little bit different. Um, the one that we were talking about, the the spell may, uh, the, excuse me, the elemental mage, was just a lot of elementals. A couple spells in there, but mostly this is elementals here. Um, this one has some Rogue constant spells. So it has preparation in there. It has shadow step. It has breakdance. Breakdance is also amazing. And then, of course, it's the whole draw a minion if it's a pirate get a coin i don't know why this is still in here um to me i don't see it you're gonna draw one anyway there's got to be other ways of drawing cards this one also has quick pick so after your hero attack draws a card so not really sure why the whole dig for treasure thing is in here also has fan of knives everybody knows that card that one's a pain and then lamp lighter is also rounding out the pack also has knickknack shack which is awesome draw a card if you play it this turn reopen this um, you don't, I, to me, I don't think that you would need dig for treasure. If all of these other ones, I would just throw two more elementals in or stronger spells. That's me personally. I don't see a problem with this being card draw and there's no pirates in here. So there's no pirates in here. And I don't see why we would even worry about that. Um, there's alternatives that you can put in this deck. Uh, dig for treasure to me is just, it doesn't seem like anything that it would need. It's saying draw a minion and there's enough minions in here to be yeah don't see it that don't see it but listen it's 1880 dust there's nothing wrong with this deck except for you know like i said i don't think dig for treasure should be in there but there's probably smarter people than me that says oh my goodness no you got to play this you got to play this maybe this is something you pull from mulligan and then the reason is that you're trying to get any of these other small minions not sure but i you know i don't think it's a bad deck i just i don't see that card in there so mess around let me know in the comments if you think there's a better card in there for this uh deck i just don't see that one specifically and then for the last one we have tourist mage and tourist mage is a little bit more expensive i tried to be low cost below 5,000 dust so it hits it but it's not as cheap as all the other ones that we talked about this one's at 4,200 dust and it's at a 50.7 percent win rate uh this one's got some things that we need to talk about number one it's got some great cards in here so first of all you need to make sure that you have sea shanty and that one is pretty cool summon three five five pirates cost one less for each spell you've cast on characters this game you're gonna do a lot of that so volume all is after your hero attacks get a one cost sunscreen that gives you plus one plus two it's got the Rayla uh, Sand Sculptor, which allows you to play the Paladin cards. And it's after you cast a spell, summon a random two-cost minion and give it Divine Shield. So you're doing stuff with spells in your hand that buffs the things that you're creating. Like this one here, whenever you cast a spell, 
gain armor equal to its cost and then you have those spells that'll give them divine shield so it would keep the minions on board it has go with the flow choose a minion if it's an enemy freeze it if it's friendly give it spell damage plus one that's going to help you from time to time use it situationally based on if you have something um, on your opponent's side that's going to smack you in the face what have you uh sea breeze chalice you'll get multiple of these drinks you also have the divine brew that'll give you multiple of these drinks Tidepool Pupil is also very, very, very strong. One mana, two, one Naga, that it's Battle Cry. If you've cast three spells while holding this, you'll discover one of them. So you'll get another one of those spells. Uh, Vicious Splither Spear is after you cast a spell, gain plus one attack until your next turn. But this one's great. Keep this on the board. Do Divine Shield to make it stick on the board. And then you do some crazy stuff with all the very, very low cost spells. And then you smack your opponent in the noggin and it's good. Uh, concierge also makes it very very easy because your cards from another class cost one less so all of those paladin cards or anything else that you've created will be cheaper and then it's got metalson servant battle cry after you've cast five or more spells this game draw two cards you have some draw uh card draw in there the most expensive here besides Rayla, the the paladin tourist is stargazer luna after you play the rightmost card in your hand draw a card so you have that infinite card draw based on what you're doing um this one's not too difficult it's very situational it is more expensive so if you're looking to go on the way way cheap route i'm not saying you know that you wouldn't want to you know craft anything in here i think we've reached a point in time right now that you can start crafting cards so if any of these decks seem awesome any of the parallels and paradise cards that you might want to craft um for some of these decks are pretty strong especially since they're above you know like i said um 50 win rates or higher another thing we're going to talk about um we're not going to go too deep in the weeds here because it's only been a week but what i wanted to do is i wanted to look at the last couple of days so since perils in paradise launched what are the neutral cards being played and i've talked about it in several videos so far that i think zilliax is the only card that needs to be nerfed right now um it's a little too high it's in a lot more decks than i would have thought um it would be for as many months as it's be around um, this is like much much stronger than Astalor. Astalor was played in a lot of decks. This is crazy. On the legend side, uh, Zilliax is like 70% in all of the decks. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, let's start talking about Perils in Paradise. So the most played card, and we're like I said, we're going neutrals only. And I also just checked Bronze to Gold, Mare the Manager. Um, that's one of the first cards that we're talking about here. Um, it's a free card. So if you have something to throw in and you're working on an ultimate extreme budget throw Marin in your deck because it has a lot of potential there and the next one that's played a lot this is the next legendary is the gorgon's armu um this one is crazy uh i, I love the idea it's a three mana three three and then it's going to give you a very low cost spell that just summons three one cost minions and then the longer you have it in your hand the more upgrade it's going to be so you could literally get three five cost minions if you wait six turns to play it so there's some awesome opportunities there. Tidepool Pupil, I mentioned this card. This one is also very, very good. Um, not only do you get to get play another spell, but you'll just have a 2-1 Naga on the board that your opponent now has to deal with. Lamplighter, I talked about this one too. Um, the cool thing is, is both of these are super, super low cost. Um, if you don't have a lot of stuff in your um, in your collection and you're looking to mess around, you have Lamplighter, you could take any one of the classes and try to make like an elemental synergistic uh, deck with some of the core class cards across the board it doesn't matter what class it is just make sure you have lamp lighter in there um hosen ruffenhauser rough hauser excuse me whatever another friendly pirate attacks give it plus one plus one this is so popular because it's very very strong and pirates are very prevalent right now so that makes sense uh next one is insidious at the start at the end of your turn upgrade your eruptions and battle cry shuffle five eruptions in your deck um it's pretty busted it's a good card grifter is another one um this one discovered amazing amulet that's pretty cool there concierge is up there but not crazy crazy high um everybody thought this card would be busted and it doesn't look like it's busted adaptive amalgam we know why that's as strong as it is let's look at some of the lowest ones that are being played that might be shocking to us um seaside giant super low snooze and zookeeper super low that doesn't make any sense you would think that that card would be pretty good 
Um, let me see what else. Uh, Dread Deserter, that's another one, has charge if this didn't start in your deck and package dealer. Um, yeah, why do the ogres get such a bum rap? Cryopractor, that's this is a card. I, I just looking at it, I don't I don't get it. Give a minion plus three plus three and freeze it. Why? For it to just die next turn? That makes no sense to me. Um the wave pool thrasher, give all of their minions negative one, negative one, and then give all their minions plus one plus one. Yeah, I don't see how that's a benefit to you. Um, even if you're playing any of those elemental decks and then the Bayfin bodybuilder, why does a Murloc has to be so low played? I thought Murlocs were the bomb. After a minion is summoned for your opponent during your turn, silence and destroy it. That's kind of cool if it stays, but, you know, I, we could tell these aren't being played at all. Like 0.07%. That's low. Dread Deserter is in 0% of decks. Package Dealer. Now listen, these are going to change in the next couple of weeks. It's only been not even a week, so give it give it some time here. Uh, scrapbooking Student, someone cop of a friendly location, and the lowest most least played perils in paradise legendary looks like afk no shocking the reason it is the lowest played is because that's one of the ones that i was able to get i think as my signature i think it was my signature no it was something no um afk was uh one of the golden cards i got on the on the on the bundles and then also we got it as a diamond so yeah that's why it's the lowest played card um that's it for this week i will go ahead and post this up every monday don't forget i'm doing all budget decks every monday i might start messing around with some other elemental decks that might work between all the classes because elementals and pirates are the two things um lots of cool things cooking for the next couple of days and i will see you in the next video